First of all, hello. Um, Mr. Hannum, great job. I, Mr. Hannum talked about me mentoring him this year. I think I act, actually learned way more from Mr. Hannum this year than he learned from me. Uh, working with somebody who's new as a teacher brought back all these fresh ideas. I sort of had gotten stuck in my fifth year teaching and all this stuff I'd done, like, oh, I've done it for five years and I don't need to change anything. And Mr. Hannum would come in every day with questions. And he'd ask questions. What, what do you think I should do for this? Do you, what do you think about this idea? And I thought, wow, that's a really, hold on a second. And then I would type up an assignment. Of course, my AP year students in the back are like, darn it, Mr. Hannum. But that's all right. So Mr. Hannum taught me uh, far more than I taught him. And I think what you guys will find is coming in as new students to James River, new people in the Leadership Center next year, that you're going to do the same thing with uh, the leadership students who are already here. Um, as Mr. Hannum mentioned, they came to me, Oscar came to me, Brittany came to me, and they said, Mr. Thomas, we'd like you to, to talk uh, at a TED conference. And I was like, who's TED? Um, didn't really know anything about TED Conference. As a matter of fact, the first time I saw that video that they showed you guys was just now. So I'm learning about TED with you guys. But they said, you, yeah, you need to find a word that defines leadership. And I, I was not like Mr. Hannum. It didn't come to me right away. I thought about it, and I was like, well, I wonder what everyone else is going to do. And everyone sort of was saying, oh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And I was like, God, what, what could I do? And so I started to think about the people who have inspired me, uh, the people that I find good leaders, the people that I'm willing to follow. And the people that I've been willing to follow and the people who have inspired me have just tons of passion, just passion for whatever it is that they do. The people that I like to talk to, the people that I like to hang out with are people who have passion, whether it's about sports, whether it's about um, painting, whether it's about writing, whether it's about video games or television, whatever it is that they do in this world, they're passionate about it. And they just have a love for what they do. And then I thought, how do you explain passion? How do you explain passion to a bunch of upcoming ninth graders? And I found this quote, the most powerful weapon on earth is the human soul on fire. I love this quote. When I think of passionate people, I think of people who have a cause or a business or an idea or something that they believe in so much that they live it every single day. And your challenge is to find something that you're passionate about. And I promise you, history has tons of examples of people who found an idea or a, a philosophy or something they were passionate about. And when they follow it, when they believe in it, people are willing to follow them to the ends of the earth and back. Sometimes that has disastrous results. There are plenty of bad people who have had passion and had lots of people follow them and lead us into bad things. But the majority of the results are unbelievably good, whether it's creativity, innovation, coming up with new, new ideas, finding new places, discovering new lands. All of these things were generated by one person's passion, somebody's passion. So uh, I want you guys to find a passion, something that sets your soul on fire. Finding what excites you. I have a couple of examples of people that I think have passion and have been incredibly successful and changed the world with their passion. And the first person I want to talk about is a guy named Rick Steves. How many of you guys know who Rick Steves is? OK, so maybe he hasn't changed the world as much as I would like. But he's getting there. By the time you're done with my class, you're going to know all about Rick Steves. You're going to, you're going to hate having to watch his DVDs in my class. But trust me, this guy is amazing. Rick Steves traveled to Europe in 1969 with his father, who was a piano salesman. Traveled for the first time in his life to this continent. He got there, and he loved what he saw. He loved the culture. He loved the architecture. He loved the art. He loved the history. He loved everything that he saw. And he came home. He went to college for four years. And in 1973, he went back and spent 120 days in Europe in 1973, backpacking for three months. Every year since then, Rick Steves has spent at least 120 days in Europe traveling, backpacking. Sounds like a pretty good gig, right? Traveling three months at least out of the year. He has taken his excitement, his passion for traveling, and turned it into to over 50 guidebooks for traveling Europe. He's turned it into over 100 television shows showing American viewers on PBS the great sights of Europe, as well as the hidden gems. This is a guy who took his passion for traveling and turned it into a company that started with just him 
in one book, Europe, through the back door to a company that has 80 employees, that sponsors 450 trips abroad for groups every single year, that has over 80 employees now, and that publishes 50 guidebooks that are updated every single year. He's changed the way that publishers publish books about travel. He's changed the way that Americans travel. And he's changed our ideas about travel, all because he was excited about the opportunity to travel in Europe. Second thing that you have to do with passion, to be a passionate leader, is you have to find something that makes life exciting and meaningful to you. And so I love these two pictures. I love the bottom picture because it's a cartoonist named Bill Watterson. How many of you guys are familiar with the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes? All right, now we're starting to get somewhere. OK, Calvin and Hobbes is my favorite comic strip of all time. And Bill Watterson, this is a picture of him drawing. You can see it down there. It's a little, he's drawing a comic strip. Does this look like a guy who's suffering through his day at work? Does this look like a guy who's just doing it to pick up a paycheck? No. This looks like a guy who loves what he's doing. Can you imagine getting done drawing that comic strip up there? Calvin and his pet tiger dancing to classical music at 78 RPMs at 2 o'clock in the morning. Do you think when he finished this comic strip that he was thinking, well, Another day at the office done. No. He was thinking, that was awesome. For my research for this, I got to dance around to classical music playing at 78 RPMs. He found something that was meaningful to him. The coolest thing about Bill Watterson is he publishes this comic strip from 1985 to 1995, super popular. At the height of its popularity, he stopped. He stopped drawing it. He stopped writing it. And the reason for that was because his passion for the comic strip had gone away. He didn't want to keep doing that. And you're probably thinking, you're telling us about passion that dies, why would you do that? Because the next step in being a passionate leader, a passionate person, is continuing to learn and reinventing yourself. Now, for this slide, I really wanted to use Steve Jobs, because Steve Jobs is a great example of reinventing yourself, of coming up with new ideas, turning a company around, going a different direction. But the history teacher in me kept saying, Mr. Thomas, use the fourth. May the fourth be with you. And so my dorkiness took over, and I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with Henry IV. And I can see all my AP Euro students back there in the back, like, retching, like, what? not again. Mr. Thomas loves to talk about this guy. Henry IV was the king of France from 1589 to 1610. He comes to power in a time where religious warfare is tearing the country apart. And he's got to reinvent himself. He's a Protestant. He's a, he's a French Huguenot. He's a Calvinist. And he wins the French wars of religion, and he's supposed to be king, but he knows that the French people are not going to accept him as king if he's a Protestant. So what does he do? He converts to Catholicism. A lot of you are thinking, like, oh, he just throws his religion under the bus? No, not at all. What he does is he converts to Catholicism. He reinvents himself as a Catholic king, and then he passes an edict called the Edict of Nantes, which allows religious tolerance for Protestants. But my favorite thing about Henry IV is that he continues to learn. Instead of sitting in his palace and just letting his advisors tell him what the situation in the country is like, he goes out and he dresses like a peasant. And he walks around the streets of Paris and he listens to what the people are complaining about. He listens to what the people want. And he makes his policies based off what he hears in the streets. Not from what his advisors who are wealthy nobles tell him, but what the people want. It's like the first grassroots political campaign. This guy continually learned. His goal was to have a chicken and the pot of every family every Sunday in France. And he took France from a backwards, destroyed country that was in turmoil into a country that was a world power. And of course, what did he get for it? He got assassinated. They still call him Henry the Great, though. All right, Steve Jobs, finally. The last thing that you have to do as a passionate leader, as a passionate person, is you have to take risks. All of these attributes that I'm telling you guys about are intrinsic to good leaders. They naturally do these things. When you're passionate about something, you're going to want to take risks. Now, I'm running a little short on time, and I love this, this picture of Steve Jobs because this is an, a 1980s ad for the early Apple computers. And he's telling you to bite that apple, which, of course, we associate with taking risks. And so uh, Steve Jobs, is, his story is well documented. But this is a guy who failed at Apple. He got fired from Apple. Um, he ended up creating another company called Next. He bought a, a digital animation studio that Lucas Films had owned that ended up becoming Pixar. Turned out OK. 
After getting fired from Apple, Apple sort of tanked it for a while. They ended up buying out Jobs' as company next and bringing Jobs back as the CEO. He's the guy who took risks on things like the iPod, the iPad. He took risks on iTunes, the iPhone. This is a guy who took Apple from a company that was almost bankrupt, getting ready to go under in 1998, to a company that was the largest internet company or the largest traded stock company in the world in 2011 all because he was willing to take some risks. There are plenty of examples of history of guys who are passionate, who are willing to do all of these things. I don't have time to talk about all of them right now, but rest assured we'll talk about all of them in the future when I have you guys sophomore year. What I want to leave you with is a challenge. You guys are going to be coming into your first year of high school next year. And it's really, really easy to come to school every day and go through the motions and have something that you're passionate about, but you think, well, history class isn't what I'm passionate about, so why should I do well in history class? Or you know, art class isn't what I'm passionate about. My challenge for you is to find your passion and then take every single class that you take at James River and find some way to apply your passion to that class. You can't tell me that if your passion is art and photography that math and science can't help you in that. You can't tell me if your passion is video games that math and science and history can't help you in that. Find your passion and find some way to make all the stuff that you're going to do in this building apply to your passion. I promise you guys, if you're passionate and you find ways to apply the things you learn in this building to your passion, you are going to be a successful leader. People will follow you. They will do everything that you want to do. They will love you. And I'm out of time.